Okay, so for day 11, we're going to be talking about our reader's responses and how to write those. We've done a practice one before, and we're going to be covering this a little bit more. Tomorrow, we're actually going to try our first official reader's response, okay? And we're, really, we're going to attempt and see how we do in it, all right? But today, we're going to be talking a little bit about what goes in them. So readers share their thinking by writing responses to the book they are reading. So in your reader's response, you are responding to what you are reading independently. It's the book that you chose from the library to read through. And you'll be writing a letter about that book. So I have an example, and I'm going to pull it up in a second. But I have an example of a letter that would be a reader's response. It doesn't, I think it fits fairly closely to what I showed you in your notebooks that have the rubric and the step-by-step -step, uh, process to do that and the thinking stems, okay? And I'll try to point those out to you as we go through that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up right now, actually, because it's pretty important here. Um, All right, here we go. This is one example, I'll show you another example. So first of all, you'll notice it's in letter format. Dear, in this case, Mr. Townsend, because you're writing to me, sincerely, and your name goes down here, okay? You see it's in, written in letter format. Another thing you'll notice, the titles, this person wrote about two books, but you're supposed to write about one. The titles of the books are underlined, and they mention the author, the person who wrote the book. So here we have, I'll read through it fairly quickly. This week I am reading Guys Read, edited by John, uh, I know I can't pronounce that last name, Blevka. The short story that I like best is called Max Swing for the Fences by Anne Ursu. I thought this story was really interesting and funny. I like to read stories about baseball. Molly was my favorite character. I loved how she told Max, you wish you threw like a girl. I wish that I had the guts to say that to a boy. I was really sucked into the ending when Molly tricked Max into going to a Hugh Fletcher autograph signing. She made Max tell Hugh he was her dad, but Hugh wasn't really his dad. Max was lying to impress Molly. Okay, so here the writer gave a summary of the story. Here, this is important, I connected to the story. Thinking stem, right there, I connected. So you have those thinking stems and they give you little starters. You want to use those throughout your writing. In particular, you need to use two. It would be a good idea, like this writer did, to write them at the beginning of the paragraph so that you can kind of flesh out your thoughts about your thinking stem throughout the rest of that paragraph, okay? But you need two. You need two. So I connected to the story because I like to play baseball, just like Molly in the story. Also, I've told a lie to my friends before. It got really out of hand, just like Max's lie about Hugh Fletcher, the famous baseball player, being his dad. I remember how embarrassed it was when everyone found out I was lying. I bet Max was really embarrassed, too. Since the story was so short, so this writer did not go into another thinking stem. You need to, though. Since the story was so short, I was left wondering, although you can technically say wondering here is the thinking right because one of your thinking stems is I wonder wondering a few things I'm wondering what will happen when the whole school finds out about Max's lie will they be mean to him forever or will they forgive him will Max be really embarrassed when they find out will Molly ever forgive Max will Max ever tell a lie again or did he learn his lesson Mrs. O'Brien do you have any other baseball story recommendations I'd like to read another story about a girl who was 
a really good baseball player like Molly. Sincerely, so and so, your name. You put your name there. Okay? So here you can tell this person's not done with the book because they're making some predictions, because they're wondering, right, about what's going to happen later on in the book. You're going to be writing tomorrow about your book, and all of you aren't really going to be done with it, and that's okay because it's a process. You're right, you should be thinking as you're going through the, the story. And so these readers' responses are helping you think as you go through the story. So that's the point of these, is to be talking and thinking about the story as you go through it. All right? So that pretty much covers our lesson today. And tomorrow we're going to be looking in more depth because we're actually going to open up our notebooks and we're going to look at those three things again that I gave you and talk details about what it looks like in fifth grade exactly the expectations that you have for reader's response. Another thing to point out here, this was obviously typed, so it was not written in cursive. You must write it in cursive, okay? I still have some of you fighting me on that a little bit, and you're writing in print instead of in cursive a little bit. You can't do that. You're supposed to be writing in cursive, okay? That's important here. All right, so today, we have some cursive practice. We have, you're also going to be writing So you're going to be writing in cursive in your cursive practice, and then you're going to be reading the book independently. We don't have as much time today, so that's all I'm going to limit you to for, for today, okay? Is reading independently your book, and then your cursive practice. Yes, Micah? What time do you have recess? What time do you have recess? Uh, it's different on Mondays. I believe it is 10.45, okay? All right. So you can go ahead and get your reading materials now.